You know what? The average age of PhD graduates surprised me. And that's because when I was looking at the data, I realized that I am part of a lower age cohort in terms of the discipline and the age at which that discipline gets its PhD. Now, I went straight from my undergraduate to my uh, PhD, and I ended up graduating at the age of about 25. Now, that is actually very young. That is almost the youngest that uh, this data shows people graduating. So I think my sort of perception of what a PhD age was, was really skewed. So I found the data from the US, from the National Center for Science and Engineering Statistics, and I found this, that the youngest age group in terms of discipline was 29.6 in physical sciences and earth sciences. Now that is me. I did a PhD in chemistry. And then all the way through, there was about somewhere between 30, 34, 38 was the oldest and 38.2 was in education. Now that kind of uh, makes sense to me and I'll tell you why. In education, I feel uh, like a lot of people, and also I know a ton of education, like uh, uh, educated people, teachers in Australia who do their job as a teacher for a while, but then decide that they want to have more of an impact. They want to go into policy. Maybe they don't like the classroom teaching as much and therefore do a PhD at a much later age. So there is quite a difference in terms of the age that a PhD student graduates and the discipline. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the perfect PhD daily schedule, the tools I've used and more. It's free content only available on that exclusive newsletter. So go sign up now. I think it's something that a lot of people wonder, how old is too old for a PhD? And let me tell you this, I don't think you are ever too old to do a PhD for the right reasons. Now, what does the right reasons mean? Well, the right reason is not as an escape to try to get away from your current horrible job or situation. If you're doing a PhD to access higher levels of um, sort of payment or levels of uh, management or whatever, or promotion that you can't get without further education, I think that's a perfect reason to do a PhD. There's a lot of places that need and and value a PhD and uh, it's you know a perfect reason you can even do it part-time alongside a professional PhD whatever it is but that is a great reason another great reason is if uh, you want to really sort of explore in depth an area that uh, really really interests you once again you don't necessarily have to do it full-time um, but there is a horrible reason. And I think I've seen this time and time again, and I think it's something that uh, is one of the hardest to explain to people until you've experienced a PhD and you understand what it's like. I have been contacted by people because of this YouTube channel who want to change the system, who are doing a PhD as a mature age student because they've been in their current position for so long and they want to change the system. They want to use a PhD to, um, to completely rock the profession they're in or do something amazing. Now, let me tell you this. A PhD and a university is not really set up for rocking any systems anymore. Now, I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments if you disagree. But I think doing a PhD is its own game and you have to just sort of like play the game to escape the game. Like you have to just do the PhD in the way the university wants, in the way your supervisor wants, and you just have to push through and you do not really have an opportunity to rock the system. It is still so political that if you rock the system too much, you'll end up sort of like shooting yourself in the own foot like I did. I didn't like the way certain things were done and uh, I got pushed out of my last career. When I reach 50,000 subscribers, I've got quite the story for you, let me tell you. So I think doing a PhD to like rock the world, change your field, is fantastic if you're contributing new and novel information to that field, but you cannot sort of like 
take it down from the inside like a lot of people you know have approached me about because it's just not the way it works academia is its own game you have to play that game and if you don't play the game then you won't get the phd and then you kind of just realize that it's one big system that you need to fit into don't try to fight the system because if you fight the system you'll never get your phd you'll never be taken seriously you'll never make those connections and blah 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 all of that stuff so yeah that's just the realities of i think a modern day phd and working within an academic academic and university system. If you're considering doing a PhD and you're a mature age student and you're a little bit older than what you think is the general cohort of a PhD, then let me give you a few tips. Now, I did my PhD as a young person. I went straight from my undergraduate to my PhD, but I did experience um, a lot of older PhD students come through during postdocs and that, and I feel like that they're perectly capable. You know, there's no difference in terms of the quality of the work that they are capable of doing, but they're in a different stage of life to the younger students. The younger students can just sort of like, you know, turn up to the lab whenever they want. They're much more free. They don't have the stresses of a mortgage or family and all that sort of stuff. So I feel like the first thing is that you can actually do a PhD part-time. And I know a number of mature age students who did that. They wanted to test the waters and you can change. You can go from part-time to full-time, but if you wanna test the waters initially, if you're doing like a research-based um, degree, that is much easier than if you've got coursework like in, a, in an American system PhD. But you can do it part-time, you can ease in, and that's absolutely okay. Some of the people that I knew that were mature age doing a PhD, they were doing it as part of their career, so they were doing like a professional, but like a research professional career. Anyway, they did it like half time in the university. It was supported by their work and it was sort of, you know, took longer, but they still sort of had their old life with this new bit attached, which was kind of fun and interesting. So they kind of got the best of both worlds. So you can do that. The second thing is I feel like as you get older, it can be, and maybe I'm just speaking on my own here for my experience and the way I am, but it can be harder to enter the apprentice mindset that you need to do a PhD, especially if you're going in with the mindset that you know, you're know you there to change the system. And sometimes you do have more real world experience than your actual supervisor. Supervisors can become incredibly institutionalized in the university system. They don't understand what it's like on the outside. And therefore, it can be harder to kind of take on their advice because you kind of think, well, what do you know? But you do have to enter a PhD with an apprentice mindset. And in my PhD survival guide ebook, I do talk about that and how important it is. So go check it out. I'll put the link around. Um, and yeah, it can just be hard to just sit back and take constructive criticism that sometimes isn't very constructive at all and then run with that because you know, maybe with a little bit of life experience, you feel like you know better. But like I said, this is about playing the academic game. This isn't about sort of uh, breaking down any sort of preconceived ideas or changing your, your profession. Doing a PhD, I think, is very much like building a house. You think it's gonna take this amount of time, but it takes much longer, always. And that's because there'll be issues that you always don't anticipate that will pop up and you have to tackle. There are gonna be personal issues that will put you behind, especially if you're an older student. It means that you've got much more sort of in your life that you need to balance, whether it be mortgages, health, or aging family members, uh, uh, children, all of that sort of stuff, it does really sort of play into the uh, amount of time that you can put into a PhD and therefore the uh, amount of time your PhD will take in total. So it will take longer than you think. And like I said, doing it part-time or as a professional PhD can be an option for those that want to try it out but aren't sure they're ready to commit 100%. And there are plenty of institutions and supervisors who will happily take on a part-time PhD student. I think the last thing that's really important for an older PhD student is to really speak to your support networks. A PhD for a younger person, you know, maybe they're a little bit more resilient just because they're a little bit more stupid 
they're a little bit, uh, you know, they'll just, they know what the university is like. They know that it's going to be tough. They can escape by getting drunk and they don't have all of the kind of uh, expectations of an adult on them outside of their PhD. But that's different for an older PhD student. So really speak to your partner, your, your children, um, your work, wherever you need to get that support um, and really kind of get them to understand what a PhD is and isn't. A lot of people have a misconception that a PhD is, you know, all eureka moments and, you know, studying and that you're going back to school when really it's much more like a job, a stressful job that uh, involves a lot of brain power and is uh, very emotionally draining because you start to sort of... Uh, uh, inf conflate your identity with the PhD. And, uh, you know, that can be very hard when things are going wrong because when the PhD is not going very well, you feel like a failure and it can be a really sort of disheartening uh, feeling. And you need to make sure that people are ready when you inevitably come across those challenges and it hits you harder than you think. So speak to those support networks, make sure that financially you're going to be secure if you're not going to be earning as much money for a significant amount of time, especially if you've got a mortgage and those other boring um, adult life stuff. And I think, yeah, that's how you really survive a PhD as a mature age student. So there we have it. I would have missed a ton of things in this video because I did my PhD as a 20 year old. And uh, let me know in the comments what you would add to that. Share your experience as a mature age student, a PhD graduate. And uh, I'm sure that there's lots of people that would love to know about your experience. So please use the comments to check at. Also, go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as my PhD Survival Guide and my Insider Forum. And have a great weekend. I'll see you in the next video.